Hello there. Um, my name is Spencer Allingham, and I'm the Technical Director here at Conducive Technologies EMEA. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to put this video together because uh, we've got a new version of DiskKeeper, quite groundbreaking for, for DiskKeeper. Many people will have known it from the past as being uh, a well-known disk defragmenter. <clears throat> well, it's not a disk defragmenter anymore. And I wanted to try and show that to you. It's shifted away from defragmentation. Um, it's now about preventing the split IOs that cause file fragmentation. So preventing instead of curing. But now, for the first time ever in DiskKeeper's history, we've introduced the RAM caching technique that our Velocity customers have been enjoying for some time. So we now have a new RAM caching feature that we can use to serve a good percentage of the read I.O. traffic from RAM instead of storage. And I thought I'd put it through its paces and record this for you guys on my laptop here. It's a Dell XPS 15. Um, it's got a, an SSD in it, uh, 16 gig of RAM, um, and uh, an i7 processor. So it's a fairly decent, fairly fast laptop. But we'll see if this keeper can use its RAM caching technique to improve the performance even further. So what I'll do to start off with, I'll just share my screen with you. There we go, move my video over there. So what I've done is I've installed a copy of Iometer, which is uh, a little utility by originally by Intel. It's available for free to download from the web, so you can reproduce this test yourself if you want to. And I'm gonna set it up in such a way that it will create as many small 4K read IOs as it possibly can. Okay, so it's gonna in effect stress test the environment just using a, a couple of my CPU cores. So I'll go ahead and, and fire up a copy of Iometer and, and get that set up. Here we go. So we'll take this one and this one and I'll just say, just lots and lots of 4K reads both of those and I'll set it up to update itself every two seconds and we'll set that going oh no I oh. there we go that should sort that out right so here we go Iometer is doing its little 4k reads so let's take a look at these statistics and I'll, I'll make a note of each one so that we can see and compare how it's working with DiskKeeper and without. So at the moment, DiskKeeper is inactive. I've stopped the DiskKeeper service. So the total IOs per second. So the IOPS are running, I'd say, at an average of about 20,000 IOPS per second, roughly, give or take. So IOPS are 20,000 total megabytes per second, so that's our throughput. Um, megabytes per second, let's see. So let's, let's round that up, let's say 80, 85 megabytes per second. So average I response time. Average I response time, that's it looks like it's about it's hovering around 0.1 of a millisecond. So we'll say 0 0.1 milliseconds. And how much CPU time is Iometer able to use whilst it's creating this traffic? So let's say that's, that's hovering around about 20% CPU time, roughly, give or take. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is turn DiskKeeper on. So at the moment, the environment is coping with this traffic as, as best it can. So let's start up the DiskKeeper service and, and see what difference it makes. So there we go, this DiskKeeper started. Now it's going to take a, a moment or two to create its cache, use its telemetry to learn about the workloads that are being run and start getting that cache populated. So that, that'll take a moment or two. And then once it's done that, we'll, we'll compare these figures and see. So while I'm waiting for that, 
I just want to let you know, DiskKeeper is a software only solution. Okay, it's reducing the amount of IO traffic that the underlying storage has to deal with by avoiding split IO situations. So removing the excess unnecessary IO when Windows does its rights. And what we're testing here today is the RAM caching, which is the new feature. So it reduces the IO traffic on going out to the storage even further by satisfying some of the IO traffic, some of the read IO traffic from server side or server side laptop side DRAM uh, rather than the SSD in this laptop. And as it will start doing that, oh, I think it's just done it. Okay, it's just jumped up. So let's compare these figures again now. So this is the difference between having that read IO coming from the RAM cache rather than the SSD. And RAM is always going to be faster even than flash and SSD, and certainly faster than, than spinning drives that you might have in your laptop or in your server. So compared to the 20,000 IOs per second we were seeing before, we're now getting about, yeah, let's call that 90, oh, it's just jumped up even further. All right, well, let's call that 99,000. IOs per second. So that's that's a big jump. In terms of megabytes per second, it was 85. Well, okay, so we'll, let's be kind, we'll call that 385 megabytes per second. So that's a lot more throughput. IOMA 2 is now able to do a lot more work at every two second window that we're measuring simply because it's getting that traffic from the faster RAM than the SSD that's sitting in the laptop. Average IO response time, that was 0 0.1 milliseconds. That's now 0 0.02. So the IOs are being satisfied faster. And how much CPU time is Iometer able to use now? Well, certainly more. Let's say, let's say that's about 35%. So, good figures. Iomata is able to do more work in the same amount of time because these reads are being satisfied from the RAM instead of the SSD. Very good. So just to prove the point, I'm going to stop the Disk Keeper service again so the Disk Keeper turns itself off. And if I'm right, these figures should return back to somewhere along the, the first column, so about 20,000 IOPS, about 85 megasecond, instead of these increased workloads. So we'll effectively take its RAM cache away again. So here's my Disk Keeper service. Let's stop that. And let's monitor Iometer and see what happens. Okay, so immediately we've dropped down again to around about 20,000 IOPS per second because those reads are having to come from the SSD rather than the RAM cache. Uh, megabytes per second, yeah, they're, they're hovering back at a much lower range. Yeah, about 80 meg per second. It's going to fluctuate a little bit. Um, average IO response time, yeah, that's, that's pushing on 0 0.1 again, instead of 0 0.02. And it's now only using about 20% of the CPU again because it's having to wait more on the storage. So those, these, are, these are pretty good figures. That kind of proves the benefit that you can get from using RAM instead of SSD or even slower spinning disk. So the question is, should you be running Disk Keeper or Velocity in your virtualized environment? Um, disk Keeper is for physical Windows machines. Velocity is for virtual Windows machines, but it's very similar technology underneath in terms of avoiding those split IOs and the RAM caching. So should you be using Disk Keeper or Velocity for yourself and, and getting these improved efficiencies when you're accessing the storage so that you can do more work in the same amount of time? Well, to answer that, we've come up with uh, a free IO assessment tool. There's no obligation. If you want a copy, just Email me at sallingham at conducive.co.uk and I'll, I'll send you a copy out, absolutely. Um, let me run a copy of it here so you can see. 
So it's a very simple one-page form to fill out. In this box here, you give it some machines that you want to measure and see if you have any storage I/O performance problems. So here you could enter in fully qualified domain names or IP addresses. Then tell it how long you want to measure for, so as little as one day or as much as seven days. Then you type in some account credentials, and uh, a domain admin account would work best here because what it's doing is using Windows Management Instrumentation, or WMI, which is a part of the Windows operating system, to gather the measurements and metrics that are already inside every Windows install. Normally, these measurements get used by things like Windows Perfmon or Windows Resource Monitor. But we'll gather these metrics, put it into a little CSV file, and then analyze it at the end to give you a very easy to digest report. Um, and I'll, I'll load in an example so that you can see exactly what the report looks like. Um, I'll use the, the data that comes with it as an example. Here we go. I'll just take a moment to analyze the figures and then it'll display the report. Okay. So the first thing you can see is the servers that are measured are color coded. So they're color coded red, yellow, or green. And this is depending on whether these systems are being critically impacted by storage performance issues, moderately impacted, or whether actually they're running just fine. And then below that, we've got 11 different metrics. Um, so if I expand them all out, you'll be able to see them. So the first one is the workload in gigabytes, so how many gigabytes were being processed in an hour. Then we've got the average I.O. response time, so how quickly were storage I.O.s getting satisfied at different parts of the day. Um, what does the I.O. queue depth look like? You know, I.O. sitting in a queue waiting to be satisfied on other I.O.s that are ahead of them, it's never a good situation. So where are you, what part of the day are your I.O.s queuing up the most? Where are you generating the most performance losing split IOs, which is one of the things that our software will avoid for you? Um, where are the IOs per second highest and so on? There's 11 of these different metrics that, that are, are measured here. Then at the end of the report, just down here, it says your potential for IO performance optimization is high, medium, or low, depending on what we find in the metrics. And then that's explained down here with a few bullet points. So in this case, it was the split IOs causing an IO blender effect. And that's where the, the split IOs are effectively excess unnecessary IOs. It's where Windows is trying to do a write, but it has to split the IO into lots of tiny separate IOs. We, each causes their own overhead. Each IO that has to be generated takes a measurable amount of time and resource to process. So when that is in a virtualized environment, these split IOs go through the hypervisor, which acts like a blender, and it mixes these IO streams into a, into a pattern that's very small, fractured, and now very randomized IO, because they've gone through the, the hypervisor, which acts like a blender. So in this case, it was being slowed down by the split IOs and that blender effect. These are things that we can definitely help you with. And in a non-virtualized physical environment, again, we can avoid these split IOs and make the storage traffic a lot more efficient by having it do nice, big, clean, contiguous, unbroken writes using the least number of, of IOs. Um, that also helps to reduce the overhead when you read that data in as well. And we can serve up a good percentage of that read IO traffic using the RAM cache as well, which as we've seen is much faster than, well, even SSDs. So this is a very good tool to answer the question, do you have a storage performance problem? And if you do, what are those problems? What machines are they occurring on? And at what time of the day? If you want a copy of this IO assessment tool, absolutely reach out to me and I will make sure you get a copy. Um, my email address again is S. Allingham, that's S-A-L-L-I-N-G-H-A-M, at Conducive, C-O-N-D-U-S-I-V, dot co dot UK. Ask me for the, a copy of that. I will absolutely send it out to you. No problem at all. Um, if you want to try DiskKeeper or Velocity for yourself, 
again, email me and I'll be happy to get a trial work copy to you. It'll run for 30 days and you can see it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Try it on your environment, on your real world hardware, on your real world applications, using your real world workloads. See what it can do for you. I hope this has been useful. Um, you've got my email address now. If there are any questions, please do feel free to reach out to me. And uh, yeah, have a very good day and thank you for your time.